Hey guys, how are you today? All right, so I was asked a while back how I make these notebooks. I sold a few of them on my Etsy shop. I have one here that I'm using to do daily drawings in. I have to do today's drawing. <laughs> um, they're simple, they're really easy to make. You're all gonna be very surprised, I think. So the first thing you need is something for the cover and then paper for the inside. Now for the inside, I have 70 pound drawing paper. That's kind of heavy for drawing paper, but the reason is because I like to use ballpoint pen um, and my um, um, fountain pens and water soluble fountain pens. And I'd like to add not a lot of water, but a little bit. And so to get some of this shading here. And um, generally the color is um, gel highlighter crayons. So because I am putting a little bit of water and a ballpoint pen, um, you sometimes get some shadowing through, especially if you hold it up to the light, but it doesn't bleed through and it's not super obvious. And that's what I like about it, which is why I use a 70 pound paper. So for the cover, so that's what these are leftover pieces from the last time I made a sketchbook. The cover is made from these file folders. So the first thing you do is we're gonna take one out and we are gonna cut it down to eight and a half by 11-ish. Um, you wanna cut it into two pieces of paper so that it fits in your printer, your computer printer, okay? So I'm gonna do that. And I don't do anything special. The first thing I do is cut off the fold. Oh, this way. My desk is very messy right now. In case you didn't notice. No, I do. It's weird to do it that way. Okay. So the first thing we do is cut off the fold. And then I'm going to cut off right here where this goes in right here. I'm just going to cut that off. And you get something that's about seven and a half by like 11 and a half, which is actually bigger than we need it to be. Um, when, we, when we're done, we're gonna cut our cover piece. Oh, let me get my book. I mean my ruler. We're gonna cut our cover piece so that it's seven by, I wanna say 10, yep, seven by 10. Um, so how, you wanna have it be a little bit bigger than what you need for it to be um, the best. Then I'm gonna run it through some printer with some copies of my artwork on it. I know what you're thinking, this is a brown background, but I like that. In all of my planner sets in my Etsy store, you get a couple of different pages that have configurations of my artwork that's used in that planner set. In this particular case, this is the feathers set. And you get one whole big sheet that's just the feathers. So if you print that sheet out on this paper, it's not gonna print the white, but it'll print the feathers and you get something that looks like this to use for the cover. So that's the trick with this. Otherwise, there's no trick. All right, so I'm gonna print this and I'll be right back. Okay, while that's printing, and I think it's just about done, we are going to need a minimum of eight sheets of paper. Um, I wouldn't do more than 16, the sketchbook gets too fat. The last one I did, this one is 16, and I initially stapled it, um, and you could use it that way, stapled. I sold them stapled, but with instructions that they could pull the staples out and stitch it, stitch it, which obviously is what I did here because I tend to be a gorilla with my journals and I do a lot of this and you know, the staples just don't hold. So um, if you want, um, if you really want it to hold, you should stitch it. But I definitely wouldn't put more than 16 because it would just get, for this little journal and that thick heavyweight paper, it would be too fat. That's my opinion. All right, so I'm gonna do eight this time. Four, five, six, seven, eight. 
I printed two covers, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. It's back under the table. So you're going to need um, them to be seven by ten. So the first thing we're going to do is cut them down to ten. They're just right at about seven, so we're going to leave that. They don't have to be perfect on this pass, and you'll see why in a bit. My blade's getting dull, can you tell? So I'm going to cut all my pages down, and I'm going to cut my foot. My cover pieces to the same size, seven by 10. I'll be right back. Okay, now we've got all our pieces of paper. Now we do a really exciting part and I'm just kidding and being sarcastic. <laughs> you wanna fold everything in half. <laughs> it's not exciting. It's really, really the most tedious part of making your own journal. But the re reward is well worth it. So sit and fold all of your papers together. And then once you have everything folded, match up you're going to match up eight of the white blank papers with each cover. Like I said, you could do as many as 16. This is two. Yeah, this is two. You could do as many as 16, but I don't recommend you do more than that. Not if you're using this thick, heavyweight paper. If you use a different kind of paper, then you might be able to do more pages, but All right, so I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. So now we're all folded and complete. Um, if you have a long pamphlet stapler, which is what I use when I staple them, and it looks like this, <laughs> then you can reach your book into here and line up your stapler with the spine um, and staple the binding together, which I've done, and I, I've done it, and I love it, and it's easy, it's quick. You could do that. Um, and that's how I do them sometimes for sale on Etsy, but again, with instructions that you could pull the staples out and stitch it closed. I'm going to stitch these closed, so I'm going to get some thread and a needle and a pokey tool, because those are what you're going to need, and I use usually embroidery floss, um, a long, large-eyed needle, and a um, pokey tool or ice pick. So one of these, like Tim Holtz, this is called a pokey tool, right? And ice, or ice pick. All right, so let me get that. I'll be right back. I have this gizmo. It's not required. You could not, you, I did, I bound books for years without it. But I, that being said, I got it on Etsy and I'll put a link for those of you who want it in the description below. It's made out of wood. It wasn't super cheap, but I love binding journals. So for me, it was well worth it. If you're not gonna use one, you need to hold all your pages tight to the spine. It's helpful if you clip them. And then you want to take your sharp tool and you want to poke a hole in the middle and then one about an edge, an inch from either edge, okay? If you have one of these cradles, it's easier. Um, I'm not super professionistic, professionistic, perfectionistic about making sure things are lined up or straight or even if you are, you should measure. I'm not going to. I'm going to eyeball the center and I'm going to poke a hole. And this cradle just help keep, helps keep everything together and tight while ensuring that where you're poking goes right into that fold. I'm going to eyeball about an inch from the edge and poke. About an inch from the other edge and poke. And then I'm going to do the other one. And this, this comes apart and I can fold it and put it away. So it stores really easily, which I love. Okay, so now those are all poked. All that just for poking the holes. So then once I'm done, it folds flat. It came in this bag. And I can put it in the box with my other book binding tools. Okay, so now we're going to take, I have some purple embroidery floss.
because I used to embroider and I have lots of floss, so it works just fine. I have a large book binding needle. And I don't have my reading glasses on. And I did it anyway! Yay! Okay! <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take one of our books. We're gonna put our needle into the center hole from the outside. You can do it the other way if you want to. All right. We'll pull it through, but leave a tail of, of whoop, where are we? Leave a tail of thread. And then I'm gonna come in the upper hole. And then I'm gonna go all the way down on the outside, oops, to the lower hole. Then I'm going to go back out that center hole again. And I'm going to come out on the other side of the thread so that that long thread gets trapped between the two cut ends. I'm going to just gently pull it tight and then I'm going to tie a knot. I usually tie it three times. Trim them off so they're not so long. And we are sewn together. I'm going to show you though in a minute how to fine tune it and I'll be right back. Okay, so now you will note, now you have two sketchbooks, but you'll notice that even though your papers are all the same size, when you fold it in half, some of the edges stick out on the top and I actually have some up here and on the side. Um, you know, <laughs> when you fold all the papers together and you fold them in half, it displaces some of the paper just a little bit. So you have to straighten up the edge, clean up the edge. I, I should say, you don't have to, um, but I like to, especially if I'm listing them in my Etsy shop. So I'm gonna line up my metal ruler with the brown edge of the cover. And then I'm going to use my X-Acto knife with a nice sharp blade on it. I need to stand up. Hopefully I can keep my head out of the camera. And you run the blade down. I usually do a few from one, each side. Okay. So that's all nice and cleaned up, right? I'm going to do the other one, which isn't nearly as messy as the first one, and I'll be There's right back. There's one more thing you can do to make your notebooks really look really cool is round the edges. Now there's a lot of different ways you can, and tools that you can do that with a lot of different ways that you can do it. There's punches out there. Crocodile, I think, has one um, that will do lots of paper, thick amounts of paper. I have this old chomper thing. Um, it says around the block. I actually got it from Canvas Corp because I think Canvas Corp acquired the company that used to make these. Anyway, it does. It all it does is punch paper and chomp corners. <laughs> That's all it does. So I'm going to actually take those out. And so there's a little waste tray right there. So I'm going to put this in here and shove it in there, hopefully pretty good. And you get a notebook with rounded corners. Now, as you're, you know, creating your little notebooks, I like to do these for daily sketches and art, um, daily art, um, daily art practice. Um, but whatever you do them for, you want to keep or want to use them for, you want to keep that in mind as you're building them. And um, add it appropriately. Maybe you want to use it 
um, to um, maybe you want to add little pockets to it to hold um, different little daily mementos and that's really sharp I shouldn't stick my finger in there um, <laughs> maybe you want to um, add calendar pages and use it as a mini planner there's a lot of different things you could use it for so think about it but this is how I make my little uh, daily sketchbooks. I don't always make them, but I do like to make them. And one of these, because of the way I've done it, eight sheets of paper gives you 16 sides times two, which is 32 pages. So one of these is enough for a month's worth of notes. When I made this one with 16 pages, you can do two months. Um, so I like that. I don't like to have the same like journal hanging around for the entire year that I'm doing daily sketches in. Um, that gets old <laughs> and, and I get bored because you know I have the attention span of a gnat um, so anyway all right that's it for today I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do if you want to see some of my daily artwork and daily doodles you can follow me on social media you can find all my social media links my Etsy shop my website all of the Facebook groups I teach or share in they're all in my link tree link which is in the video description you it says link tree slash Gina B. Aarons. If you click on it, it's going to give you a list of places to find me on the internet, so I just can't hide anymore. <laughs> but that's okay, I'm alright with that. If you want to support the free content on my ch content on my channel by shopping in my Etsy shop, uh, perusing my Amazon wish list, please feel free to do so. I'll be okay with that. And above all, don't forget the most important thing, which is to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself, because you deserve it, and I'll see, I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Thank you.